hardly know what to tell you about the next half hour, except that it has been reported as true by those to whom it happened. It has been investigated, and no one, as yet, has been able to explain it or disprove it. Only a very few moments ago, this was the scene of a tense human drama, played for very high stakes indeed, a man's life. A jury has just determined that poor Marlon did not murder his wife. Thus, a sensational murder trial comes to an end. But sometimes, the end is also the beginning. Perhaps if Paul Marlon could have known what lay ahead, he would have preferred being found guilty. Well, you just going to sit there all day? What? Hasn't it gotten through to you yet? It's all over, Paul. You're a free man. Yes, I know. Such enthusiasm. It's not that I expect thanks, Paul. Nobody who charges the kind of fees I do should expect gratitude, too. But I had an idea that you might at least feel relieved. Dan, I'm sorry. I'm just so bone tired, I can hardly feel anything. I didn't even remember to thank you. Uh, no, I am relieved, and I'm very grateful, too. You were just wonderful. I'm lucky I had you for my attorney. It's easy to be marvelous when your client is innocent. You're still thinking about Julie, huh? I am. I don't know if I'll ever really stop. I only knew who did it or why. What are you going to do with yourself, Paul? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Start trying to pick up the pieces, I guess. You could do with a change of scene. Yes, I suppose so. And a rest? You need a rest, Paul. I'll think about it. Never mind thinking about it. You're going to do something about it. Come on. Hey, Morris. My paper would like to know how you feel about being let off. Being let off? <laughs> OK. Being found not guilty. Pretty silly question, isn't it? How do you think he feels? Why don't you let your client answer, counselor? Well. You've gone so far out of your way to twist and distort everything I've said since my wife's death. I see no point in even trying. How about you, Counselor? Do you want me to print no comment also? Or do you have anything to say about the very peculiar shortage of prosecution evidence and witnesses? Not even the district attorney can produce what doesn't exist, Ferris. Is that why the murdered woman's family wasn't even called to testify? Or did you and the DA decide they didn't belong at your private little trial. Now look, Ferris. You know perfectly well I tried to reach a brother in New Zealand. Sure you did. Tried real hard. Yes, we did. But communications to the back country of New Zealand are practically non-existent. Uh-huh. Besides, it wouldn't have possibly contributed anything relevant. And you know that, of course, without even asking him. Look, Ferris, what are you trying to build? The trial's over. Your paper got a lot of circulation out of it. Now, why don't you find someone else to pick on? It's just that I believe, along with a lot of people in this town, that Marlin killed his wife in cold blood. Now, wait a minute, Where Ferris. I'm getting sick and tired of this. me to see him walking away scot free. Now, look! Thanks. I've got my headline. Oh, come on, I want to talk to you. I walked right into his trap. You know your nerves are on edge. All you needed was a push. Look, Dan. No, I want... Minute, please, there's something I want to ask you. Now, the things he said about the trial, about the way it was handled... No, no, now, no, you no, didn't... no, Paul, it's just as I told you. 
The DA's office jumped before they had anything much to go on. By the time they realized they had no real evidence against you, what with the papers beating the drums, getting people worked up, they were publicly committed. They had to go through the motions. All right, then why Ferris's personal vendetta with me? Well, he can't possibly believe that I killed Julie, can he? Oh, I doubt if he even cares, one way or the other. But he will go on needling you as long as it means good copy. And so will the rest of the press. Which is just what you want me to avoid. Mm -hmm. That's why all this talk about going away? Yes. You know, what Ferris said about some people in this town is true. People react emotionally, Paul. They, they react to cliches. Now, Julie was a lot older than you. You know that. She had a lot of money. And, well, people who see too many plots in the movies, you know, they're affected by it. Now, it'd be wise to give the town a chance to cool off. Yourself, you need a rest. And you can get a new perspective on things, come back with a fresh outlook. Is that my lawyer's advice? No. It's your friend's advice, Paul. Okay, Dan. All right. I'll go away for a while. I just hate the idea of looking as though I were running away. Yes. Hello. I'm Paul Marlin. I recognize you, Mr. Marlin. The hotel phone. All I have left is a third floor rear. I'm uh, sure that'll be quite fine, thank you. Well, it'll have to be. This is our season. Yes, so I understand. I'm sure you'll be quite comfortable. Guess I'm lucky to get anything at all. It, uh... It's right on the button. How long do you expect to stay, Mr. Marlin? Oh, I really had no plans. Would it matter to you? Not a bit. Well? Oh, yes, this will be fine. Thank you very much. That'll be six dollars a night. Oh. When you leave, I'll have the trunks moved tomorrow. Well, they're no trouble.
help you? Urban. Any particular? No, anything, anything. This time, please. Um, bartender, tell me something. What do you think? What's your name? Joe. Tell me something. What do you What do you think of people who see things that aren't there, and hear things? <laughs> They've had too much to drink. No, no. I mean, before they had too much. Before they've had even one drop. Too much imagination, I guess. That's it. Too much imagination. Too much imagination is a dangerous thing, you know? Like the man said. Now, that's a good mirror. That is a mirror that I approve of. Friendly, you know? You look at it. Looks back at you. No tricks, just what's there. You know, Joe, I've got a mirror in my room. Very tricky mirror. Everything, the whole place is tricky. You can't trust it. I mean, sounds and things that aren't even there. The clock's striking the wrong time. Dogs howling like they're supposed to do when somebody dies. Thunder, wind, and lightning after. And, and you know there was no thunder or lightning tonight. Man came in with a German Luger pistol, and he shot me. Sure. And I didn't even know him. I never saw him before in my life. And I was wide awake. I mean, it's, it's not like a dream. I was wide awake. Is it, can, that's some imagination, huh? It's, it's like I'm an inventor. I invented a person. I mean, this man didn't... He was made up of all faces I'd known before, like in a dream. He was... Someone, someone real. Tall, about my height. May I have some change, please? Scotch and water, please. No ice. this supposed to be? Pardon? One pound, Commonwealth of New Zealand. Oh, I'm sorry. I've only been in the country a few hours. It takes a while to remember about the currency. I beg your pardon, but... 
When is the next bus out of here? To where? Anywhere. Well, there's one at 205 to San Francisco. It's San Francisco. 450. Put your luggage on the ramp. The driver will pick it up when he gets here. Huh? Your luggage. Put it on the ramp. No, no, no. I, I don't have any luggage. Thanks. Roger Wiley, you are Paul Marlin, aren't you? What is it? Why'd you keep running? I told you I'm Roger Wiley, Julie's brother. Aren't you well? Shall I call a doctor? Well, the landlady said it'd be all right if I left my bags here while I went looking for you. Explain who I was. How, uh, how did you find me? Your solicitor told me where you'd gone. I only landed in San Francisco this afternoon. Well, why did you come here? Well, Julie's estate, for one thing. Then there's the matter of... the gun volume. I always carry it with me. It's a good thing to have along when you're out on the range for weeks at a time. Are you sure that you're all right? No, I, I, I'm fine. I'm fine, really. Sorry, it's just... It's just nerves, that's all. Julie's death. A terrible trial. I'm sure the last month has been very unpleasant for you. It'll probably give anyone the shakes. I'll be all right in the morning. Uh, why don't we meet then? Over breakfast, maybe, we can have a talk, huh? That's a good idea. With the hotel full up, I hardly know where to look for a room at this hour. What I mean is... Well, I thought perhaps I could flop in that chair for tonight. Oh. Yes, yes, of course. Why not? Thanks. You were... Uh... You were saying there was another reason why you came? Oh, yes. I've been out on the range rounding up some beef for shipment. When I got back, I found this letter from Julia waiting for me, along with a notification from the court about the trial and all. Julia wrote this the day before she was killed. Stay away. 
away from me. I know why you came. I had a warning. You had a what? I know why you're here, and I know why this gun, too. I saw it all happen. Paul, I don't know what you're babbling about. You're here to kill me. You read the newspapers, didn't you? You believe what they said, that I killed her, don't you? That I planned the whole thing to make it look like somebody had broken in just to cover up? Paul, listen to me. I don't believe anything of the sort. Why should I? Why are you here? She told you everything in that letter. Paul. She knew everything right from the start, didn't she? I never fooled her, not for one minute, I'll bet. Paul, give me the gun. No. You don't realize what you're doing. No, I tell you! I waited too long. I planned all this too carefully to have it all blow up my face now. I am her heir! I am her sole heir! You killed her? Yes! Gonna take it away from me. Nobody's gonna cheat me of it now. Dearest Roger. I only hope and pray you will believe that the last six months have been the happiest of my life. I know how foolish you thought I was to marry a man so much younger. I must confess I had my moments of doubt, too. But Paul loves me, really loves me, Roger. He proves it in a hundred ways every day. I've never felt so alive, so wanted. Enough of this, dear brother. I want very much to give Paul something in return for all he's given me. I've decided to immediately transfer all my holdings, real estate stocks, everything, to his name. And I want it to be a surprise. Naturally, there'll be some complications with those things you and I own together. And as it has been so long since we've seen each other, couldn't you find the time to come to San Francisco? It would be wonderful if you could. Besides, it's high time the two men in my life met and became friends. Judy. Paul Marlin went to the gas chamber insisting that he was the victim of an hallucination that drove him to murder. The only witness he had to support his plea was the bartender. But then bartenders hear so many strange things, don't they? Probably it was Paul's guilty conscience that somehow created the sights and sounds of his own destruction. His conscience was his executioner. In a moment, a program word about next week. If ever there was a place where the ability to see into the future would come in handy, that place would be a racetrack. But ace jockey Ronnie Watson's brush with the supernatural has become one of the great legends of American racing. See for yourself next week. <laughs>